We will now turn our attention to observations as a research technique. In fact, there are several observational techniques and this class will pick up on some of these. Now, observational techniques are research methods that enable the researcher to collect data firsthand. The researcher makes observations firsthand and records the observations and this forms the basis of the research data that will be used. It relies on the observer's experience and this is the primary source of data collection. So it's the observer's experience or the observer's experiences that are essential in making this technique a success or not. The observers should be trained to record accurately what is seen. No more and no less. Precisely record what is, uh, what is seen. This method of data collection opens up a wide variety of research areas. In fact, any phenomenon that can be observed and experienced may be subject to this form of data collection. So it is very wide. It enables the observer to make very rich observations about the respondent and about the context in which the respondent is operating. So it is a very full picture of the whole circumstances that may be recorded and reported back. The main advantage of this approach is that it gives the observer the full picture, as I said. It's a holistic approach. Everything is taken into account. The, the context of the interview or of the, the situation is taken into account, as well as the responses of the respondent. The observer not only experiences the phenomena itself, but also the context in which it is set. This approach to research gives a wide understanding of the setting or context in which the focus of the research operates. So it's, it's looking at the respondent, but also looking at the environment in which the respondent is operating and that environment may influence the respondent and may explain the respondent's views on certain issues. It also yields strength of feelings and greater understanding as compared to alternative research approaches. A questionnaire may be ticking boxes. That does not indicate the strength of feelings. Observations may take the strength of feelings into account. The person being observed may express uh, deep feelings about situations, strong feelings about situations. And this type of technique can take these into account. Now let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of observations, starting with the advantages. First of all, it provides direct information about behavior of individuals and groups. It's direct information. It's, it's observed directly. It's not feelings put onto paper and then extracted from the paper and collated and analyzed in an office someplace else. These are direct observations. Secondly, it allows the observer to enter the situation and gain an understanding from the inside. So the observer can see the circumstances, can see the environment in which the respondent is operating and will get a greater understanding of the answers as a consequence. It allows the observer to identify unanticipated outcomes. When the observer sees the circumstances and sees the situation, they may, they may identify situations which could arise in the future. 
and we'll have a much bigger picture of the situation than simply if a narrow question was answered and transferred onto a, onto a piece of paper in, in a questionnaire. So the observer has a much greater understanding of the situation. It allows the re research to take place in a natural, unstructured and flexible setting. So it's, it's, it's a friendly environment in that sense towards the respondent. The respondent is familiar with the setting. So the respondent can feel at ease and therefore will be more inclined to be natural and tell the truth and uh, give an accurate response to the questions. Now let's look at the, the disadvantages of this technique. The disadvantages are as follows. The approach is expensive and time consuming. Well, the researcher needs to go into the setting and needs to spend time studying the setting, studying the environment, and perhaps spending time with the respondent and asking the right questions and making sure that a full picture has been probed. Secondly, the presence of the observer may affect the behaviour of participants. That's a real problem. Sometimes the participants will give answers that they think the questioner wants, the answers that they want. They're, they're trying to please the person asking the questions and trying to give answers that will please them. But of course those answers are not accurate. So there is a problem there that there may be bias. The observer may focus on selected events and ignore others. This will bias the outcomes as well. Sometimes the observer uh, may ask questions in one line only, just focus in on one issue and probe that one issue in detail. But there are other issues that have been forgotten about or, or ignored, which could be just as important or even more important. So there are issues about bias in that context as well. The observer must observe the situation and not influence it. That's important. The observer must not influence the situation or influence the outcome. If that happens, the whole exercise has been compromised. The whole exercise is biased. The observation should record the usual behaviour. But there's no guarantee that the observed data is atypical or is typical. So there is a problem. The observation should be the usual behaviour of that person in that setting. But how does the observer know if it is the usual behaviour or not? So there is an issue there and perhaps significant further research would be required to try and expose whether the, the person's behaviour was, was typical or atypical. Now let's look at situations where observational research is good. For example, to assess the characteristics and impact of the physical environment within which the research takes place. Well it's really good for that because it does take into account the physical environment. It looks at the setting in which the research takes place so it is excellent for that purpose. It takes the characteristics of the human and social environment. It, it, it looks at how the human and social environment interact. It also looks at the physical environment, as I said earlier, and looks at how the social environment depends on the physical environment, and how the social environment has influenced the physical environment. It looks at how the individual relates within the social. So it, it's giving a whole picture. That's the point. It's holistic, as I said earlier. The participants or staff 
of the research are sometimes called actors. In the context of ob observational research, we, we talk about the respondents as being actors. Uh, that's the, the usual term that's used. So this form of research enables direct observation of how the actors interact, interact and respond to each other. It's how the actors interact and respond to each other. This type of research gives a full picture of activities and life in the area under observation. It could be in a, in a business, it could be looking at the office situation in a business, but it gives a full picture of life in the office, of the, the social interactions in the office, of the various personalities, of the physical environment of the office and how it impinges upon work and the, the social interactions within the office, as I said. So it, it gives a full picture. It doesn't have to be anthropological in looking at uh, how people live on some Polynesian island. This can be within the business. This type of research can be conducted in a wide variety of areas. It can also record and interpret the, na the native language of the program. Now that does suggest that it's some exotic piece of research based on some exotic country, but not necessarily. Uh, within business, the engineers have, if you like, a different language to the financial services sector. They have different terms, different expressions, so it's, it's a different language almost. So the, the use of observational techniques picks up on this use of language and the importance of these almost slang terms that are important within different sectors. Organizations develop different languages to describe the technicalities of their work. It may be seen as jargon, but it's very important because it's the way the people within the business operate. Observational methods of data capture can cope with this and get to the underpinning issues. So with observational techniques, the importance of the slang terms, the jargon, the, the underpinning language, these can be worked out. And these can be dealt with. There's also issues of non-verbal communications. The observational technique enables the researcher to witness non-verbal communications and reactions to events. This can be everything from hand gestures, body language, facial expressions, uh, expressions of surprise or expressions of shock or expressions of misunderstanding. And these are important. When a question is posed, the person may, may pull a face in a way that suggests that the person does not understand the question, so that further comment is required to clarify the question. The, observ the observer needs to be trained to pick up on these communications. The observer must be sensitive and be trained how to deal with this. But there may be a whole variety of clues in the way in which people deal with each other and the, the type of people they are. It could be the way they dress. Um, perhaps civil engineers may dress differently to bankers or accountants. Uh, they may be more outgoing whereas others may be more confined to the office. Their expressions and the way they express their opinions may be different. Some people may be very open and very animated in their responses, whilst others may be very quietly spoken and timid. Maybe that's a function of the type of activities they work at. And it's the way they arrange themselves in their physical setting. 
the way the office is laid out or the way the, the factory is set out. So there are all sorts of clues as to how people may act and interact with each other. Notable non-occurrences. Well, the researchers should note the non-occurrences of some expected events and the reasons for the non-occurrence. Sometimes uh, events are expected and when they don't happen uh, some reason must be sought as to why they don't happen and the researcher in, in a, an observational context is better placed to find out why something did not happen as well as why things did happen. So it's, it's a situation where the research is, in the, is, is able to pick up on non-occurrence the same as occurrences. Now recording observations, well this is more than simply recording events. It includes materials, artifacts and other relevant uh, information. So it's not just talking to the respondents or to the actors, it's looking at the materials looking at the way the people dress, the, looking at the, the way they interact with each other, looking at the type of work they do, looking at, uh, if you like, the culture of the people, looking at the artifacts that they've got and looking at relevant material which gives a more thorough understanding of the person and of the group. The researcher or the observer should describe the place and discuss the physical setting. That's important. They should identify and describe the people who are who participated in the activities. So describing the place, describing the physical setting and then describing the people. That's important. Describe what was found. Found in, in terms of the responses to the questions uh, and the wider situation, the non-verbal responses as well as the verbal responses. Document the various interactions in a diary or in a, in a day book. Make sure that there is a full picture recorded. And describe any failings or errors committed during the observation. So it's important that the observer is self-critical, looking at perhaps what went wrong as well as what went right and discuss any unanticipated events and account for their impact on the observation. Unanticipated events, uh, situations which were atypical, situations which were not anticipated uh, but which arose. Um, and these can be all sorts of situations. Um, it could be natural situations arising from anything from weather changes to natural disasters or it could be anything. It could be um, a sudden announcement of the changing circumstances of a business which uh, now makes the business vulnerable to market conditions because a competitor has suddenly brought out a new product. So it can be a whole variety of situations and the observer needs to look at the situation and try and account for every eventuality including the unanticipated ones. Try to get a reaction from the respondents and try to explain the impact of the, un of the unanticipated event. So first of all it's important to note field notes are important in recording events. These are generally notes made during the observation and they supplement the formal observations in recalling the events. So there's two types of response recorded. There is the, if you like, the formal response, the response of what the observer considers important, the answers to the questions, the physical environment, the non-verbal responses. These are, these are written in one set of response notes. And then there are the field notes, the the wider situation in which the observation took place, the wider events, the background notes, 
um, information that was passed on in the course of preparing for the observation itself. The field notes may be unstructured accounts of events surrounding the observation itself. However, they are important because they, they can act uh, as, as a method of recalling what happened and explaining uh, the observations themselves. Like the main observations, the field notes must be factual. They must be accurate and thorough and free from observer bias. So the field notes must be accurate, they must be factual, and they must be free from bias. They must report what actually happened, not what the observer thought happened or wished had happened. The observations and field notes must contain all the information and the final account should not rely on memory. So the observations and the field notes taken together must provide all of the information necessary to make sense of the observation and to give the information worth, final worth, uh, and ensure that it delivers what was intended at the start. So what we've looked at in this session is observations and the use of observations to try and collect information. This technique is widely used in sociology and in anthropology but there is no reason why it should not be used in business. Looking at the business, looking at the um, situation in which managers and workers find themselves and observing uh, the managers and the workers, asking questions, picking up on their responses, looking at their environment, looking at their uh, non-verbal responses. All of this is valuable information. It's very rich information. There is a danger with it because of the problems I mentioned earlier, especially in the context of bias. But generally speaking, it is a technique that should not be overlooked as a way of collecting valuable information. That's all I'm going to do on this session, so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.